Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the president of Youngstown State University, Coach Jim Trussell. Thank you, thank you so much. Welcome to Ohio's Mahoning Valley. An exciting day, the unveiling of America's first all-electric pickup truck made by Lordstown Motors, the Endurance. It's been so much fun to get to know this great team from Lordstown Motors. A lot of people out here in the audience, our elected officials, our business leaders, our citizens in general, thank you so much for all of your encouragement to this team. Thank you for being there for each and every one of them. And I know this is a special day for all of us right here in the Mahoning Valley, Northeast Ohio, the state of Ohio, and our nation. For those of you streaming in from all over the world, the future of the Mahoning Valley is an exciting future. And we're so excited about today's festivities. We've got a great lineup for you today. It's been a lot of fun getting to know this team that the Lordstown Motors have put together. Extraordinary engineers, business leaders, working together. They've done extraordinary things in such a short time. We were all excited when it was announced that they were coming. We had no idea how quickly we would move to this day. We want to thank all of the people who have come to our valley to spend time and, and encourage us, speak with us, talk to us about how impactful this will be for the future of our region, state, and nation. It's going to be an exciting day. We thank you for being here. I would like to introduce the first speaker we have today. You may have noticed when you came in flying overhead the Goodyear blimp. Ohio has a long history. How about a hand for the Goodyear blimp? That's what I'm talking about. Ohio has a long history of innovation. And one of the most innovative companies that we're fortunate to have right here, headquartered, world headquarters here in Northeast Ohio, the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Please help me to welcome Aaron Spring, the Director of New Ventures at Goodyear. Thank you, Jim, and thank you to the Lordstown Motors team, and thank you to all of you who are watching online but all of you in the room here who are leaning in and helping to accelerate the next generation of mobility. I'm honored to be here along with, as Jim said, the iconic Goodyear blimp flying overhead. And this is a great day for Ohio manufacturing, innovation, and technology. Now Goodyear has called Ohio home for more than 120 years. 122 to be specific. And it's these shared Ohio roots that form the basis of a great collaboration between Lorestown Motors and Goodyear. And it doesn't stop there. We share values of performance, technology, innovation, and an eye towards a more sustainable electric future. The endurance pickup exemplifies these values. So I want to say a big congratulations to the Lordstown Motors team. Now I have to say, the Endurance is a great example of style, design, advanced engineering, and most importantly, a vehicle that has been designed for commercial fleets to make sure they can get those jobs done well. And 
okay? I might be a bit biased, but the tires really pull it all together. So you gotta check it out. Now at Goodyear, our goal and objective is to be the tire and service provider of choice for electric vehicles. And this collaboration with Lordstown Motors is a great example of striving towards that strategy. So thank you all once again. I really look forward to continuing this great collaboration with the team at Lordstown as we drive for the next generation of mobility. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aaron, and to all of our friends at Goodyear. It's an exciting partnership. We really would have liked to have you had the opportunity to tour the plant. Something like 6.2 million square feet. Right now, Lordstown Motor Company is, is working on, I think, about 30% of it already and continuing to grow and grow. So instead of that tour, how about enjoying a short video about this wonderful plant? This physical plant we have that for 53 years made vehicles seven days a week here. This plant has produced 400,000 vehicles a year. There's very few plants on planet Earth that have built as many vehicles as this. It's a gem of a building. The plant itself is very, very capable. It's very modern. Even though it's 53 years old, it's, it's got modern equipment. It has robots, it has stamping machines, all the welders, a very modern paint booth. It has the assembly line that enables high volume production. We're able to retool this and reconfigure it for our purposes to make electric pickup trucks here. The stamping presses is where it all starts. Raw metal comes into the back of this building, off of the train tracks and these machines start to stamp it into the bare parts. Next, the robots get it, and they start to, to weld it into the structure. And then it gets dipped. and then it gets assembled. It's mostly workers on a line, a moving line, very automated line, uh, where every bolt is tracked. Every torque wrench is tracked and it bubbles up to the servers. And that infrastructure and the total kind of man-machine interface that this machine of a plant has made, and for us to just reconfigure it, right? If we were to build this from scratch, it just wouldn't be possible. They aren't gonna make buildings like this again. And so we, we're taking it, we're reconfiguring it for our purposes, and we've been really pleased with the equipment here and the resources we've been able to find here. To produce a vehicle is not trivial, and uh, no matter what kind of vehicle it is, it still has a steering wheel and seats and seat belts and airbags and doors, door handles and windows and windshields, and, and that takes to do that every time the same quality and to do it at a good good economical price point uh, takes a lot of automation and a lot of people and, and this plant has been uh, perfect for us. I'm Steve Burns, this is Lord Sound Motors. How about that? How fortunate are we right here in the valley to have a facility like this? When this opportunity came to be that this facility was available, the people that went to work, whether it was our elected officials on the federal and state and local levels, or the local business community, or just the people encouraging 
that we've got to make something great happen in this facility. It's been a joy to watch, and that collaboration has brought us to this day. The voice you heard was Steve Burns. We are so fortunate in this valley and in this state and country to have Steve Burns. He's got unbelievable tenacity, and I, I realized, I guess he was a pretty good wrestler at one point in time, so I can see why he has that tenacity. Graduate of Cincinnati Muller High School, went on to the Ohio State University studying electrical engineering, went out and began an innovative entrepreneurial career that has been extraordinary. Coming up with innovation, building up companies, selling them. I'm sure most of you remember when mobile voice control was invented, which became Siri. That's Steve Burns. That's the type of innovator we have right here in the Mahoning Valley in this wonderful plant. But perhaps the thing that has been most impressive as we've watched him come in in such a quick time to take on this dream to make his home state the center of the electrification of first the pickup truck and then beyond, he has put together a team of people with experiences all over the world, with experiences of putting plants together, making plants better, making efficiencies better, making ergonomics better, an amazing team of real champions. So we're fortunate here today to have you hear from our leader, the Lordstown Motors. Please welcome Steve Burns. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. You know, uh, really a proud day for us, but I, I want to start off by thanking Coach Tressel. What a great uh, value he's been to us, inspirational. He's all about Ohio. Uh, I think he knows everybody in Ohio. And uh, when we first approached him with this, a lot of people had, uh, you know, a lot of difficulty imagining that a small company could come in and, and take over a facility like this and make a vehicle that had never been made before. But Coach never batted an eye and, uh, and has helped us the whole way. And we got big plans for Youngstown State, a lot of those graduates to uh, funnel down into us as well. And, uh, you know, I, I want to thank Aaron from, from Goodyear. Goodyear is a great partner, as you know. You need good tires, and, uh, and uh, you're going to see the, her tires on our truck in a minute. I, I thought, you know, this is about the truck, and we're going to show you the truck in a minute. And that's the, that's the bell of the ball, but I thought I'd just take a minute uh, about how we all came to be here today, right? Why are we in Lordstown, Ohio? Why is a company called Lordstown Motors, right? And it kind of started when GM announced that they were going to close the plant, and, and the plant is what drew us here, right? In this plant, you're probably seeing 1 50th of it, right? This is uh, 6 million square feet. This is... Uh, 108 football fields under roof, right? There's thousands of robots in here. There's a whole entire building just for the paint, right? Behind us is the stamping machines that take the raw metal, stamp them into body parts. And, and I hope if you've never seen an industrial robot before, you get a chance to look at some of the ones that are moving here. They're, they're quite fascinating. But GM did us a great service, right? So GM was exiting the building, but they wanted to continue making cars here or vehicles here. And we promised to do that. And that's really how we got it. But we said, for us to do it in any time this millennium, could you leave it intact? When a, when a building, factories are hard to get. When they, are, when they are purchased, they're usually gutted. We asked GM to leave this fully intact, still warm for when it made its last cruise, right? And that was a big ask, but they did it. Uh, and so our job is we don't, have to pop, we don't have to build a plant, populate it with robots. We just have to reconfigure this plant. And that's what we're busy in here doing. 
and uh, it's going it's going great. Um, we're going to show you a prototype, you know, but next year we will be making the real McCoy, you know, production level out of this plant. Our our goal is to be the first electric pickup truck in the world, right? And I think everybody knows the status of pickup trucks in the United States, right? People are buried in their Ford 150. They have such loyalty to it, right? I, I think uh, everybody's aware of that brand loyalty. But we are coming in with essentially a 75 mile per gallon pickup truck. And for the folks we sell to, fleets, right? Cost is king and we are the least expensive pickup truck. But in the end, it still had to look good. We could automate this factory to the teeth with a great team that we have, but if the vehicle didn't look good, it probably wouldn't sell well. So it's a, we had to balance all that in the design of it. I'm just kind of prepping you for when you, when you see it. Um, and uh, it took a great team to do that. So we have, in, in something like this, an endeavor like this, a world-changing endeavor like this, it takes a, a team. The whole thing's about team, right? The robots are good, they're a great team member, but the humans are the key, right? So we have been fortunate enough that we've been able to, able to attract just the best of the best. From old school automotive, from new automotive, from, uh, from battery, from from all the people that, that know how to make these robots sing uh, across the board. So I, I thought that would be the tough part. I thought it would be tough to get people to move here, tough to pe get people to leave a perfectly good job to come to a startup. Uh, but the, the dream is so uh, big that a lot of people wanted to join that dream. And, and so we've been able to attract, and, and as the day goes on, if you see anybody in a Lordstown uh, shirt, you know, I encourage you to say hi to them and just get a little feel of the depth of, of what we have here. All right, so for the, let's talk about the truck for a minute, right? The truck's name is Endurance, right? That name has a kind of a dual meaning, right? It's an electric truck and it goes very far in a charge and it's a very tough truck and it's built for people that need tough trucks and so it can endure. But the people of this valley have endured, right? The, the grit, that's the only word I can really think of to describe how, how the workforce is in this part of the world, right? That's why we're here. The factory attracted us here, but this workforce, the toughness of them, um, the skill set that they have, uh, the, the, the work ethic, right? So that really attracted us here. Uh, and so we, the, the name endurance on the truck is also for the people that are building this truck, right? Um, if we were going to make a truck that gets 75 miles per gallon equivalent, right? I think everybody probably realizes pickup trucks get about 16 or 17 miles per gallon, right? And, and they have for 30 years. And, and that isn't gonna change much, right? That's just physics of an internal combustion engine and an automatic transmission and all the routing of the power and differentials and gears and U-joints and drive shafts. It's stuck there for a reason. Physics, you can't, sometimes I try to bend physics, it never works. You cannot bend physics, right? And, and so they're stuck there. So how do we as a newcomer come out with a truck that gets 75 miles per gallon equivalent? Now when I say equivalent, Everybody thinks in terms of miles per gallon. Of course, an electric truck doesn't use gasoline, but the government has an equation to, to do an equivalency. So um, how, did, how did we do that? Right. We had to build a truck, although it looks like a pickup truck pretty much on the outside, underneath it's like no other truck. And the big innovation we have, I mean our battery is of course very important in, in a truck this size. But the big innovation we have is something called these hub motors. So there are all, only four moving parts in the drivetrain of this vehicle. And those are the four wheels. Just to put that in perspective, a modern day four wheel drive pickup truck has thousands of moving parts. The, the pistons, the valves, the crankshaft, the differential, 
the gears, the drive shaft, the U-joints, thousands of moving parts. Every moving part has to be lubricated, every moving part can wear, and every moving part is a decrease in efficiency. You've got thousands of these little moving parts. And we've perfected it over the years. When you get in your, your car, it starts and it gets you it, where you want to go and it does not break down. We have perfected it, but we haven't reinvented it, right? So even a Model T had 700 moving parts in its drivetrain. The simplest vehicle, the Model T. We have four. So, um, and if you've never heard of a hub motor, I, I usually equate it to these lime and the bird scooters that you see in all the cities, right? There isn't a motor on that with a sprocket with a chain going back to the back wheel, right? Those scooters burst upon planet Earth because of the innovation of a hub motor. It made those possible. And we just have very robust and big, tough hub motors. And the software to control those hub motors is unique, right? You have a computer and a very powerful motor on each wheel. And, and so we boldly claim a few things. We will have the best traction of any pickup truck ever made. We will be the safest pickup truck ever made, right? Of course, we're getting the best fuel economy of any pickup truck ever made. When I say that, we don't say that lightly. We understand the millions of man hours. I, I think, I don't think there's a way to get a stat on this, but the human endeavor, the human experience, I don't think anything has been engineered as much as the modern day vehicle, right? Our society is built around automotive. Uh, so when I say we're the best at this and the best at that, we, we don't say that lightly. But we are going to be the safest because we don't have a V8 engine in the front and we got a lot of crush area, right? Crush is what saves you in, a, in an accident. Our battery is low. Our hub motors put weight literally on the four corners on the ground. We handle better than any pickup truck. This handles like a sports car. It's a pickup truck that handles like a sports car. So, um, it, it's just a reinvention, right? But, you know, reinvention at the wrong time, if you're too early or too late, doesn't work. And this, this is a little bit of luck and providence. We are hitting it at the exact right time, right? Some of the earlier cars that have paved the way for electric, people are starting to believe in electric. Suddenly there's four or five companies going to come out with electric pickup trucks in several years, right? We're going to beat everyone to market, right? So timing is perfect. We expect, um, we have already, we've already sold. So normally you do not start the sales process until today when you can drive the vehicle on the stage and people can see it, get a feel for it, drive it, understands its presence, its, its use case. But we, we didn't have that luxury. We had to know a little early, before we bought this or before we got too deep into this, would fleets buy an electric pickup truck from a new unknown startup OEM, right? So we started pre-selling. And I think we have, we, we have our whole year, our first year of production already pre-sold. And we haven't even showed the vehicle yet. If we get lucky, today we might get five-fold that you know, people buying online once they see it. So we're very excited. This is the, probably the biggest moment, moment in a car company when you unveil it for the first time. And again, when you see it, I ask you to think about, it, it looks like a pickup truck on the outside, but underneath it's, uh, it's like nothing else. So how do you do that? You have some very great design engineers, very great production engineers to build it. Uh, it, it, takes, um, it takes almost every discipline you can imagine, right? It's, it's electrical engineers and mechanical engineers, right? But also chemical engineers and just the whole gamut. And you got to sell these things, so it takes a, a great sales staff, right? And uh, uh, all the things that it takes to... We are standing up a car company from scratch here. And we wanted to have this event in the factory just to give you a little feel for what it what that means, right, and how hard that is. And um, the last thing I'll say is I think, I, I think people expect this kind of innovation to come from the coasts, 
right? And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with California. But the Midwest is where cars are made. The Midwest happens to be where most pickup trucks are sold. Uh, and so we thought, why should California have all the fun? We think our people can, can do the same thing or even better. So right here in the heart of the Midwest, in a place, the, a little bit of irony that this place wasn't known for electrification, right? But it was known for building cars, good cars, high volume. This factory is built for one thing in life, high volume manufacturing of cars. They were putting out about over 400,000 cruises a year here when it was GM. We think we can put out about 600,000 of our vehicles because they're much simpler to assemble, right? Because of the reduced parts. So. Um, that's um, right here in this part of the world, that's quite radical. And what we hope is around here, what typically happens with automotive is for every automotive job, there is eight ancillary jobs, right? Suppliers start to be close to the, to the factory, so there isn't as much travel time for the parts. Restaurants, hotels, all the things that spring up to support, you know, a village here of all these workers. So we're hoping to, to encourage all that to happen here. We're calling it the Voltage Valley because we think it has a chance to become the electrification hub of the Midwest, maybe even the country. So we're quite excited about it. Um, I, I want to thank all the family members that are here because that have let us borrow your your significant other or your mom or your dad, um, because I know everybody's been working so hard here and um, we'll try to get back to a little more balanced life uh, because, you know, family life is everything. Uh, and if you don't have good, good underpinnings, it won't work. So we've got a great factory, a, a great team, a great market, and it's just a great time. It's the time. I've been too early and I've been too late in some endeavors. Both are brutal, right? And you can't always control it. We just hit it right. We really think we've hit it right here. And when you see this truck, if it's as, as good as we think it is, um, we're gonna sell a lot of them. And we're gonna, the name Lordstown, the name of this small town, is gonna be on trucks all across the country and, and maybe even outside the country if we're successful. So I, w I just want to thank everybody. I want to thank God for, for our country and for our company, and may he continue to bless us. I'm gonna, I get the honor to introduce our next guest. Uh, as you can imagine, in something like this, government support is really uh, critical. And we have enjoyed, I think because who doesn't like jobs? Who doesn't like green? who doesn't like innovation, who doesn't like teaching workers the new skills of the next century. So we, we've just enjoyed a very broad um, support from, from all the government leaders, local, state, and federal. We're really fortunate to have the Secretary of Energy with us today. So he is a cabinet appointee, and he runs the, the Department of Energy, which you can imagine uh, all the things he's got going on, and yet he's been able to take the time to come here um, because I think he believes in what we're doing, and um, he, he, uh, he understands it, of course, deep down at a molecular level, and um, we're just really happy to have him here. So please help me welcome the Secretary of Energy, Dan Br Brulier. Congratulations, Lordstown. All right. Steve, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be with you here in what we refer to now as Voltage Valley. And what an honor it is to be here with our mutual friend, the Vice President of the United States of America. You know, it's always interesting, it's always a pleasure to see American ingenuity at work, especially when it comes to the automobile sector and even when it comes from a new competitor to my old firm. Uh, that firm was also my dad's firm. He was a service manager in a Ford dealership down in Louisiana for a number of years, and I followed him in his work. 
Although in my case, rather than working in a garage, I worked in a cubicle, moving away some of the regulations that eventually led to the adoption of hybrid cars and now autonomous vehicles. But I also spent some time on the factory floor. So I know the work that went behind this momentous day. Congratulations again. Congratulations on the rollout of the endurance. Steve, I think what impresses me even more than the technology that went into the truck is the ingenuity and the vision that we have here in this room. On March 6, just a year ago, the last cruise rolled off the line here in Lordstown. But where other people saw a closed plant, the literal end of the line, you saw an opportunity. And even more, you saw a clear lane for a light duty all electric pickup and the potential for this area to be an epicenter of EV technology. And you acted on that opportunity. Your team retooled this plant and invested in the people of this community. And in the future, you could be employing thousands of people here, building thousands of endurances, and perhaps even, even other EVs. That's gonna empower people all around this plant, all around Northeast Ohio, and all across Voltage Valley to fulfill their dreams. And in a real sense, that's also what our team strives to do every day at the U.S. Department of Energy. I'm proud to say that the work at DOE and our 17 national laboratories has been one of the main drivers of innovations in today's transportation technologies. They stem from our fundamental research and development, but they make an impact on the lives of Americans because DOE is one of the largest supporters of technology transfer in the federal government. Last year, Stanley Whittingham and John Goodenough, two researchers that we've supported for much of their distinguished careers, won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for the development of lithium ion batteries. Their work underpins the same technology that powers the cell phone in perhaps every one of your pockets. It powers the electric vehicles on the road today. And as you'll see in just a few short minutes, the endurance as well. But we're not done yet. At DOE, we see energy storage as an area that is rife with potential. So this past January, we launched our Energy Storage Grand Challenge with the goal of accelerating the development, commercialization, and importantly, the utilization of energy storage technologies, as well as sustaining and advancing America's leadership in this vital area. We're also going to secure the supply of materials used to build and power even more EVs. Many of the technologies that work in this plant today, and so many others around the country, rely on critical minerals and rare earth elements. That includes the EV batteries that we just discussed, as well as the computers, the TV screens, and some of the robotics that you see on the other side of these, these beautiful walls here. And here, the United States is facing an acute supply chain vulnerability. Today, we are import reliant on 31 of the 35 critical minerals. And that means our imports are greater than half of our annual consumption. We rely on China for 80% of our rare earth elements. And there are 14 critical minerals that we don't produce domestically at all. We're gonna do everything that we can to address these vulnerabilities and ensure that you have the materials you need to build the endurance and other American EVs. As we speak, my department is researching ways to identify and extract critical minerals and rare earth elements from untapped sources, such as our vast coal reserves here in America. Some five million metric tons of critical minerals could come from the recoverable reserves in Appalachia, with even more from our basins on the western half of the Mississippi. So despite our current challenge, I'm optimistic that even as we've seen America drive toward independence in energy, one day we will also be celebrating a critical minerals independence day. President Trump, Vice President Pence, and indeed our entire administration understand that the heartbeat of our nation's greatness is America's manufacturing. We are determined to protect American workers and to ensure that you have the secure, abundant energy that you need to dare, to drive, and to dream. 
we have a wide open road ahead of us. So let's take that highway, let's build that bright future right here in Lordstown, throughout the Voltage Valley, and all across our great nation. Thank you.
I get to introduce the Vice President of the United States, Mike Pence. <laughs> Well, hello, Ohio. That might be the first time I've ever driven up on stage. And what a beautiful vehicle to do it in. The Secretary of Energy, Dan Bruyette, is doing an incredible job for the United States of America. Would you give our Secretary a big round of applause? So great that he's here in Voltage Valley. To Mayor Arno Hill, thank you for your warm welcome, for your great local leadership. Legendary coach Jim Tressel, and above all, my seatmate, Steve Burns, and the men and women of Lordstown Motors. What a great day in the Buckeye State. You know, it really is an honor to be here to be able to drive up and help unveil what will soon be the first fully electric pickup truck on the market in the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Lordstown Endurance. Beautiful. And I gotta tell you, it's a nice ride. And I'm a truck guy. I'm currently between trucks right now, <laughs> but uh, I'm looking. So, but uh, this, is, this is just a great day. It's an exciting day. From a time uh, not too long ago where we had heartbreaking news, today is a new beginning for Lord's Town, and it's a new day of leadership in electric vehicles in the United States. It really is great to be with all of you. And uh, on my way here today, I got, a, I got a phone call as soon as I landed from a friend of mine. He heard I was headed to Ohio, and I think he sounded just a little bit jealous. He's a man who loves the state of Ohio, and he has been the best friend that automotive manufacturing has ever had in the Oval Office. I bring greetings from the 45th President of the United States. President Donald Trump. And we just love the Mahonan Valley. I mean, one of the very first campaign stops I made was at the Canfield Fair uh, in 2016, not too far from here. We had just a few people that came out. That would be tens of thousands of people that came out. It was probably the best attended county fair I ever attended in my life. But I saw the enthusiasm then. I knew that people, I knew that people all across the valley knew that, that, that in that candidate, a man who would become president of the United States, you'd have someone who would fight for jobs and fight for American workers. And today is one more example of President Trump's commitment to make American manufacturing great again. And I want to thank all the distinguished guests who are here with us today. You know, they, they're working with uh, Senator Rob Portman, working with your great governor, Governor Mike DeWine and others. This president went to work right after the people of Ohio said yes three and a half years ago. We cut taxes across the board for working families and for small businesses. We, we rolled back more federal red tape than any administration in American history. We unleashed American energy and the kind of energy innovation that you're going to see in the valley now for decades to come. We fought for free and fair trade and the values and ideals that have always made this country great. And on every single promise, President Trump delivered for the people of Ohio and the people of America. And you know, that's especially true when it comes to uh, automotive jobs and to manufacturing. And for the first day of our administration, the President said he was going to put 
free and fair trade, trade deals that put American jobs and American workers first back at the center of American policy. We put China on notice that the era of economic surrender is over. We stood strong for American jobs and American workers against China. And thanks to the President's leadership, in just a few weeks, it'll be official. NAFTA is gone, and the USMCA will soon be the law of the land. And it puts American manufacturing, American workers first. I mean, didn't, if you didn't know it, under the USMCA, 75% of all automotive parts have to be made here in North America, and 40% of automotive parts must be made by workers making an average hourly wage, essentially the average hourly wage of the United States. That's how we're doing it, folks. That's how we have taken the incentive that was in NAFTA to move jobs south of the border. That's all gone. We're going to keep automotive jobs growing right here in Ohio and right here across the United States. And if you think back on it, the first three years of this administration, the results really speak for themselves. We saw businesses, large and small, create more than 7 million jobs, including 500,000 manufacturing jobs, of which 48,000 new automotive jobs were created in just three years. It was a manufacturing renaissance that was underway. And really, what was most meaningful to the President and to me was not just that jobs were being added, but wages were rising. And what was most exciting to us is wages were rising most rapidly for hardworking, blue-collar Americans. The forgotten men and women of America were forgotten no more. And the American dream was working. It was working again for every American. The President and I couldn't be more proud that in our first three years, we saw the lowest unemployment ever recorded for African Americans and Hispanic Americans. The American dream came roaring back under President Donald Trump. It's true. Our economy was on an incredible roll. The stock market setting records, jobs being created, wages rising. And then, as we all know, then came the worst pandemic in 100 years to strike our country from overseas. But in the midst of that, as the head of the White House Coronavirus Task Force, I can tell you, every step of the way, President Trump exercised the kind of leadership that every American would want, decisive action. I mean, literally, before the month of January was out, he stood up a task force bringing a whole of government response prepared. But even before the first coronavirus case was transmitted from one American to another, this president suspended all travel from China into the United States of America. He put the health of America first. And I can tell you firsthand, I can tell you firsthand the President's decisive action. Decisive action on that January day bought us invaluable times to stand up a national response. And in that time, from here in Ohio and all across the country, you saw it. The American people produced and delivered hundreds of millions of medical supplies to our incredible health care workers in all 50 states. In fact, can we just hear it for our doctors and our nurses and all of the incredible health care workers that are working right up to this moment for those struggling with this disease? God bless you all. And we reinvented testing, literally from a standing start. You know, when I was tapped to lead the Coronavirus Task Force in late February, we were using the old system of testing where you send samples to a state lab or you send them to the CDC. I mean, we'd only done a few thousand tests by the end of February. But because the President brought together massive commercial labs in this country, challenged them to step forward and meet this moment, 
We're actually testing more than 500,000 Americans every single day, and we'll soon have tested 30 million Americans all across this country. We met the moment. We met the moment with American innovation. And I have to tell you, American manufacturing stepped up in so many ways to meet that moment for those critical medical supplies, but maybe none more important with the way that we saw many of our greatest manufacturing companies step forward and partner with the federal government to produce ventilators at an unprecedented rate. You know, what we'd heard from some countries overseas early on was that many people were succumbing to the coronavirus because they didn't have the equipment like ventilators to see them through the worst of the disease. Well, we were going to make sure that didn't happen in America. And I couldn't be more proud to tell you that thanks to the President's leadership, thanks to the way American manufacturing stepped up, no American who required a ventilator was ever denied a ventilator in the United States. That's a national accomplishment. And, I, and we met this moment. We met this moment, I believe, with compassion and ingenuity. We saw, we saw the people across Ohio and across America put the health of their family and their neighbors first in those 45 days to slow the spread, and the people of Ohio have continued to practice good common sense and good hygiene in the progress that you've made. And because of the foundation that we laid in this economy in those first three years, I'm proud to report to you, as we stand here today, including Ohio, all 50 states have started to open up our economies again. And while you see in the news over the past week or so, we have rising cases and outbreaks in several southern states, I want to assure you that our task force and our entire administration is working continuously with leaders in those states to respond. I'll be traveling to Texas and Arizona in just a few days to meet with the governors and health officials there. But I want you to know that it's a testament, it's a testament to the resilience of the American people that, like here in Ohio and beyond, in some 38 states across the country, cases are stable or even declining. And I want to say, the people of Ohio and your governor, Mike DeWine, have set a standard for the nation. Thank you for leading. And with well, the, all the American people are doing, we're putting America back to work. Today's one more example of a great American comeback. The truth is, because of the foundation that we laid in this economy together over the first three years, even as we began to open up America in the month of May, we actually saw the largest one-month increase in jobs in American history, three million jobs created. And that was before more than half of small businesses were even open yet. And a lot of economists actually predicted that we would lose eight million jobs that month. The unemployment rate might hit 20%, but if you didn't hear about it, not only did we create three million jobs last month, but, uh, but the unemployment rate didn't go up to 20%, it actually dropped down from 14% to 13 percent, and we're continuing to see unemployment cl claims steadily decline across the country. America's coming back. And we also know the American consumer is out there rolling and getting this economy going. Retail sales soared just a few days ago by 17.7 percent. That was also the largest monthly increase in sales in history. So the recovery is on, which makes it even more time and more appropriate to be here at Lordstown Motors, a part of the great American comeback. And all of you gathered here today, and all of you with great family histories in this community know that um, uh, this community is a perfect example of the character and the resilience and the faith that's driving an American comeback after all we've been through. I mean, when you think about the storied history of, of this community and even this facility, 
Endurance isn't just the name of the pickup truck. Endurance describes the character of the people of the Mahonan Vamp Valley. Give yourselves a round of applause. I mean, in the Mahoning Valley, for more than 50 years, this historic building was used to literally manufacture millions of cars that were sold and driven all over the world. I'm told they made the 66 Impala, the Cavalier, and the Cruze right here. And when this facility closed in March of 2019, it was heartbreaking for this community. That's why, as you all know, President Donald Trump sprung into action. He reached out to General Motors to see if they could find a way to help bring jobs back to Lordstown. He reached out to business leaders. He reached out to your governor, Mike DeWine, to Senator Rob Portman, to your members of Congress. And on May 8th, the President was delighted to get the call. He called it great news for Ohio when Steve Burns bought this building and set into motion the plans to create Lordstown Motors. Thank you, Steve. Can we hear it one more time for Steve Burns? Thanks for stepping up and starting a new chapter of history here in Lordstown. And they were walking me through this place, and it's, in, it's just incredibly impressive. Many of you have history working here. You see the incredible assets, but they're retooling it. They're retooling this historic facility. I met with a lot of the engineers that designed this vehicle, and I met with the team that's retooling this to manufacture these electric uh, pickup trucks. And soon uh, you're going to continue that Mahoning Valley tradition of world-class auto manufacturers. American workers are going to turn to American steel with American trucks made right here in Lordstown. You know, back when I was governor of the state of Indiana, I used to say, out here in the heartland, we do two things well. We make things and we grow things. And thanks to uh, the resilience of this community, thanks to the innovation represented here today, once again, Lordstown's going to be back big time in the make things business, and you're going to make history right here at Lordstown Motors. I believe it with all my heart. I mean, the truth is, you all know what the president and I know is that manufacturing workers are the backbone of America's economy. And here in the Valley, you have some of the very best in the world. On the way here, I was reading about a few of them, like a man who spent more than 30 years in the auto industry after he spent 14 years in the United States Navy as an electronics technician. He was eight years on a nuclear submarine. And today, he's going to be the director of central maintenance here at Lordstown Motors. Would you join me in thanking him for his service to America and his leadership in this company? John Ritter, thank you so much. Where are you, John? Thanks for your service, John. We're truly grateful in the United States Navy. You know, my unworthy son-in-law is a lieutenant in the United States Navy, so, so we're proud of you and grateful for you. Oh, I also heard about uh, a man I met just moments ago who came to this country as a refugee after he heard a speech by my second favorite president, Ronald Reagan. He spent more than 20 years in the auto industry. He's worked his way up to the top management positions in three major companies. He truly loves this country. He's lived the American dream. So would you join me in congratulating John Vo for his great, great leadership and his extraordinary contributions to this community. Thank you, John. But I mention uh, John Ritter and John Vogue because they're really emblematic of uh, all of you. All of you in this community and all of you who are involved with Lordstown Motors today and will be involved in the years ahead. The truth is you are leading a comeback here in Lordstown. 
You're leading it on the basis of character and resilience, a reputation for uh, professionalism. And you're leading it on the basis of faith. I mean, you all know, and people of the heartland know, that for all that we've been through, that the best days for this community, this state, and this nation lie ahead. And I want to thank you so much for your example in these challenging times. And there is great opportunity ahead. I actually uh, learned this morning that GM and LG announced a, a new battery plant that's going to be built just across the street. And just a week later, Steve announced that you'll be building your own batteries right here in this building. So Lordstown Motors is just the start, and it's going to continue to grow and expand jobs in this area. And with the help, help of, uh, oh, you can applaud that. I think that's really big news. Thank you. And with the help of uh, Coach Jim Tressel, I know you're, you're working with Youngstown State to provide on-the-job training for talented engineers and technicians of tomorrow. Can we hear it for Coach Jim Tressel and that great school? Thanks for partnering. Thank you, Coach. And there's a great promise. We only got one truck here on the stage, but Steve actually told me that they've already pre-sold 14 thousand editions of the Lordstown Endurance Truck. It's ready to be made here and shipped out of here. What a great start. So they got a great team here doing the retooling, doing the engineering, but I know in the months ahead they're going to be ramping up production. Steve was telling me by about this time next year they plan to hire five, six, seven, eight hundred people in this community and turn this factory all the way back on. It really is going to be a transition to greatness back here in Lordstown after a heartbreaking day in 2019. To see this kind of a comeback, I, I hope you see it's a, it's a testament to the confidence that the people of this company have and the people of this community. It's tribute to state leadership, uh, to a governor and to state officials that we're not going to leave Lordstown behind. Uh, it's a tribute to a president who was not shy about letting his feelings be known about the future of Lordstown. Am I right? But ultimately, it, it is a tribute. It is a tribute to a half a century, a half a century of craftsmanship, a half a century of integrity. Uh, a reputation that has now drawn the investment to this community, not just this company, but the other companies and investments that have evolved. So in a very real sense, in a very real sense, to the people of Lordstown, this day at Lordstown Motor is your day. And so I, I thank you for letting me share it with you. The beginning of a new chapter in the storied history of this great community and this storied facility. And I know that with your hard work in the days ahead. With the support of your great governor, Mike DeWine, with people like Senator Rob Portman, with the leadership at your state house, and with the support of President Donald Trump, and with God's help. The best days for Lordstown and Ohio and America are yet to come. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless Ohio and God bless America.